Welcome to the Chase Benefice Online. Today we hear the story of Bartimaeus, a blind man reduced to begging by the side of the road. He asks for mercy, but instead of assuming that he wants his blindness taken away from him, Jesus first asks what it is he wants. Likewise, we can ask ourselves what we want to pray for, and whether we are prepared to be changed through God's mercy. As our service begins, we say together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear now the words of this week's Collect. Lord, open our eyes to your presence. Grant us a vision to see what we can achieve. As your love touches us, so may we reach out to others. Lord, stretch our capabilities, extend our vision and increase our sense of purpose, that we may grow in our service of you through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit are one God for ever. Amen. Penny is now going to read this week's Gospel. A reading from the Gospel of Mark. As Jesus and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet. But he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. Today's Gospel passage is one of the stories of Jesus healing the afflicted. Many people view it as an example of the miracles of Jesus' ministry, demonstrating his compassion and divine authority on earth. But as we look more deeply into the story, we can perhaps see other layers of meaning. The passage is about a man who is physically blind, who once had sight and is able to see again. He has been begging by the roadside, dependent on the generosity of those who walk by and are free to live their lives in a way in which he cannot. We can take it literally, and we can recognise that blindness afflicts us all in many ways when we feel lost in the dark, when we can't see the way ahead, when fear or grief or illness make it impossible to see the world as we did before, when we sit on the margins, unable to join in ordinary life. Despite his disability, Bartimaeus is quick to recognise and accept Jesus as the son of David, and he's determined to attract his attention. He ignores those who try to stop him asking for mercy, And in response, Jesus tells the crowd to call him over. Now that strikes me as a bit surprising. Here's a blind man surrounded by a crowd being asked to make his own way to the healer. If Jesus was driven simply by compassion, we might have expected him to go to Bartimaeus himself. So what else is going on here? Well, we might remember that we've seen this sort of thing elsewhere in the Gospels. In several passages, Jesus heals people only after they've made the effort to approach him and have made it clear that they want to be healed. For example, you may remember the woman in the synagogue who is bent over and unable to straighten up. Since we're not made to walk that way, it must have been tiring and uncomfortable. But Jesus calls the woman to come to him instead of him walking to her. There are other examples. In Matthew's Gospel, he tells the story of two blind men. They, like Bartimaeus, are healed, 
but not before they've been asked what they want Jesus to do for them. Like Bartimaeus, once they have been once they've asked to have their sight restored, they are healed. In John's Gospel, Jesus asks the man who had lain by the healing pool for 38 years whether he wants to be made well. Then he tells him to take up his mat and walk. None of them were healed until they made the choice to be healed and made the request. Asking for healing can be more than a straightforward request. The woman who suffered from hemorrhages touched Jesus' cloak as he went by. Unlike Bartimaeus, she was not trying to attract Jesus' attention. In fact, she was trying to avoid it. But like Bartimaeus, she needs courage and determination to act in order to seek healing. Jesus doesn't ask her what she wants, but she does truthfully tell him her whole story. She, like Bartimaeus, is told that her faith has made her well. It seems clear that Christ does not heal us without our consent, but there is a bit more going on here. We're being told that we need hope, faith, and the willingness to be truthful. We may not be healed physically, although miracles can happen, but as Paul tells us in Romans, God hears our prayers before we offer them and sees our needs more accurately than we can. But he waits for our prayers, our truthful account of what ails us and the change that we genuinely long for. Perhaps it's worth remembering that Paul's own prayers to be freed from the thorn in his flesh were not granted in the form of physical healing, but were answered by greater understanding. That God's grace was sufficient, for power is made perfect in weakness. He was strong, not despite, but because of his affliction. So those who are healed in these stories are given the responsibility to ask, to come into Jesus' presence, to actively seek healing. They're recognised as autonomous and independent, not objects of pity, pity, but as individuals capable of acting for themselves and making choices about their futures. They're partners in their own healing, not just passive recipients of God's goodness and grace. We all have times of darkness and alienation, and God invites us to turn to him for help. Our prayers are the conversations we need to have with him in order to find, to find what we truly need and want. We can find healing by the gift of his presence, in which we are given strength, hope and courage. That is, if and when we are ready to ask for it. Amen.
Ashley is going to lead us now in prayer. Let us pray. We praise you for all men and women of vision, for all who through their insights have built up your church and world. We pray for writers, musicians and craftspeople, for church synods and councils, for our bishops and all who minister to us. Lord, open our eyes that we may behold your glory. Bless, O Lord, all who are of inventors and research workers, all who seek to improve and enhance our world, all planners, builders and manufacturers. Lord, may they understand the effect they are having on the world. Lord, open our eyes that we may behold your glory. We thank you for all who through their goodness have provided for us, all who have provided for our schooling and our care. We pray for the National Health Service, for doctors, dentists and nurses, for administrators, porters, support staff and volunteers. Lord, open our eyes that we may behold your glory. We pray for all those who have lost vision, all for whom the future looks bleak, all who have lost their way, all who through the lack of insight are in trouble. We pray for those whose sight is impaired and all those who are blind and for those who help and support them. Lord, open our eyes that we may behold your glory. We give you thanks for all who are lost from our sight. We pray for loved ones departed. Lord, open our eyes that we may behold your glory. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now we come to the peace. Let the word of God dwell in your heart and keep you in peace. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. The peace be with you. Thank you for joining us for this service today. There will be another online service next Sunday. Details on the bulletin and the Benefice website. For those who are able to join us in person, there will also be a service at 8am in Enstone and at 10am in Spelsbury. And so our service ends now with a blessing. The Lord reveal to you the hidden glory of his presence. Open your eyes to behold that he is ever with you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Mm -hmm.